How fast could your 5K time get if you trained the correct way? I went from running a 25 minute 5K to becoming a sub 15 minute runner in just three years. And in that time, I went through thousands of studies on strategies and running form. And I discovered three powerful strategies that improved my 5K time in as little as four weeks. And the crazy thing is, almost nobody is doing it. If I had not taken advantage of these, I would still be stuck trying to improve but never really seeing any results. So in this video, I'm going to show you what the three powerful strategies are, how they made me improve so fast, why they work, and how to implement them in your own training plan so that you can finally live up to your potential. But if you need to quickly improve and got a 5K coming up, let me give you a science-backed protocol that will make you 10% faster. Here's what you do. About two hours before your race, take 500 milliliters of beetroot juice and then about one hour before your race drink two cups of coffee this will significantly reduce your time to exhaustion and make you faster but it will only gain you a small edge on race day so now let me show you the three powerful strategies that will make you run faster than you ever thought possible back when i started training seriously in 2013 we all looked toward the brits they were truly dominating in endurance sports following the London 2012 Olympics. But over the next couple of years, the Norwegians started to get better and better. And today, they are all dominating across endurance sports. So what did they discover early on that made it possible for them to become so fast? The Norwegians started to do something interesting. They started to use data and science to back up their training, but not only that. They started implementing specific protocols that were perfectly designed designed to take advantage of our current understanding of physiology. So instead of relying on experience and heart rate zones, they started to do something different. They developed something called the Norwegian method. And when I started using it, my 5K time and endurance took off in a way I've never seen before. But for you to understand the Norwegian method, you first need to understand something called lactate. Think of it like your body's way to handle a party that's just gone a bit too wild. If your muscles are having a wild energy party, then oxygen is the thing that keeps the lights on. But when you're all out of oxygen, lactate comes in as an emergency to keep the lights going for a little bit longer. But lactate can't keep the lights going for that long before you run out of energy. So the better you are at keeping your party going without inviting lactate, the further you'll run and the faster you'll run. So what the Norwegians discovered was that they could train their body's ability to keep the party going only on oxygen and keep it going at the highest level possible without inviting lactate to the party. This made them extremely fast. But people soon realized that even without being able to measure lactate on a daily basis, we could all take advantage of this newfound protocol if we just knew how. So let me show you this powerful protocol because without it, I would have never become so fast and I'm sure it will help you reach new heights as well. The Norwegian method goes like this. You'll spend around 80 to 90% of your time training in zone two, which is equivalent to about 1.7 to 1.9 millimoles of lactate in your blood. But if you're like most people and don't have access to measuring your lactate on a daily basis, here's what you can do. Zone two is the same as a conversational pace, or you can even take it as far as to the pace where you can still breathe through your nose. The remainder 10 to 20% of your training should be spent doing VO2 max training. VO2 max is like your body's ultimate endurance score. It's measuring how much oxygen you can use during exercise and this is where the hard work comes in the most popular protocol to use is a four by four minute all out effort with about a three minute break in between. But a lot of people go wrong here because you can't just do this method and then expect to see results. You need to add another element in your 5K training. And when I started doing that and implementing that in my training, I started to improve every single 
week. In Greek mythology, there was a guy named Milo. Milo was a legendary wrestler from the Greek city of Croton. He was said to possess extraordinary feats of strength and endurance, which he developed through a simple yet effective method. According to the story, Milo began his journey to become one of the fittest men of all time by carrying a baby calf every single day. As the calf grew heavier every single day, so did Milo's strength. This daily routine continued until the calf was a full grown bull. By this time, Milo had become so strong that he could carry the bull on his shoulders with ease. Milo's story teaches us that you can't just expect to run the same route with the same intensity every single week and then expect to get better. It might work at first, but you'll soon stagnate and not get better no matter how consistent you are. Instead, here is what you need to do. If you really want to become a phenomenal runner, you need to put more demand on your body every single week. So if you start by doing VO2 max work of four by four minutes all out, then you need to build it up to five times, six times, or even seven times over time. This is called progressive overload. And if you pair it with the final crucial point, which everyone seems to have forgotten over the last few years, then you're going to blow past your personal bests faster than you ever thought possible. When I was a professional triathlete, I would train for about 15 to 18 times per week. And during racing season, I would train using the exact same principles that I just showed you. But outside of racing season, we needed to add another element to our training because without it, I would have never been able to go truly fast when I needed to. You see, when people online tell you to train like the pros do, they forget one crucial point that elite athletes do on a weekly basis that you and I just don't. And it drives me insane every time I see it. So what do elite athletes do that most people don't do? They race a lot. This means they spend a lot of their time in race pace. Because even though we like to forget it sometimes when we're discussing training strategies, if you want to get better at something, you actually have to train that specific thing. And if you only do a couple of races in a year, then you don't do the same as elite athletes because they might have as much as 50 race days in a year. That's why during periods of no racing, we need to add some race pace specific training in our weekly schedule. You need to get a feeling of how hard it is and how much you're going to suffer on race day. Because if you don't, then you're never going to reach your true 5K potential. But knowing how to train is only half of the equation. There's another piece to the puzzle that makes running fast effortless. And without it, you're never going to reach your true potential. And I'll show you exactly what it is and how to use it in this video right here.